Okay, first page of this arrangement by Philip Cavern of the theme from Schindler's List. So just looking through it real quick, we have this sort of stretch. So hopefully, let's see, if you have a big enough hand, this is reasonably easy. You just stick your third finger inside D pretty far. And you notice that I'm using the fifth finger at this angle which is fine, you know, you don't always have to play like this. So you kind of stretch it out, thumb is almost there, second not quite, but that's okay, because then as we go through this D, we can kind of stretch the second finger over into G and we're all set. So with the pedal down, nice and slow, it's not a fast piece. In the meanwhile, of course, I have to get this ready. That's a pretty far stretch, you have a D and a D, and if you want to be super advanced, you can slide it in and get E flat ready with finger five, but you don't have to bother for until the very last second. So you can pull in the thumb there, and then as you approach the E flat there uh, in this measure right here, okay, now you can go ahead and, you know, maybe think about sliding in. But the beginning looks and feels like this. Now notice that I'm not holding the half note until the very end of the measure, I'm letting go because the pedal is down. Reset. And look, I'm really far inside the keys, so as I go into D, it's easy to reach the B flat. If I'm over here, you know, that's just unnecessary. Alright, so continuing. Thumb pulling in, sliding in on the right hand as I prepare the left hand. Now as I come down the right hand, I can either stay inside or pull back out. Since I don't have anything coming up where either my fifth finger has to play on a black key or my thumb has to play on a black key i can take advantage of that fact and just kind of keep my default position with the thumb on the tips of the white keys now third goes on the b flat fourth on the c fifth on d so my right hand is basically ready but in the left hand I think five is fine, four is possible, but it's a bit of a stretch, so most hands will not be happy. So one and five, and th that way the third is right there on F, and that way I can extend. So from that, and again, the pedal should be down, so, right, so as soon as you feel you caught the, the, the chord on the pedal, Kind of open of uh, opening of the left hand occurs. I'm aligned with the third finger right here. Okay, let's see what's around the corner. Here, uh, here it is. Reset. Now here you see in the red I put down three because if you have a four. Then you have to move it again. If I have a three on the D, it's easy. Again, I wouldn't wait given that there is a pedal in the left hand. Right. Now notice, you can kind of see my nose right here and it's not here in the middle, right? It's not pointing in the usual uh, middle of the keyboard uh, position. It's all the way over here, which means I'm sort of lifting my left hip off the chair, rolling over onto my right hip. A little uncomfortable, but you can, I guess you can scoot over, which is not proper piano technique, but if you're practicing for many minutes, you might want to relieve the pressure on your lower back. But in any case, uh, here I am in position. And so then in, uh, let me highlight it with cyan here. I want to make sure that as soon as I hit B, B flat, boom, that's what happens, right? So I have this instant 
sorry, that's the wrong box. Instant shift as soon as I hit that V flat. Right, and that's again a very, very physical sensation. What I'm feeling when I do this is I'm hitting my side with my upper arm on the left. Right, and I'm really maintaining that ridiculous, almost a 90 degree, nine o'clock angle on my fifth finger with mostly my second kind of aligned on that on that G, but another possibility is to use the third, like we did up here, right? So if you look last couple of notes in the left hand on the top line, it's fifth, third, same thing can happen here. We can have fifth, third, just like that. And that might make it easier to negotiate through that left hand passage. So let's go from the beginning of measure five, and here we go. I'm almost thinking maybe do three here as well. I, just experiment. Again, none, none of these are sort of rules set in stone, but it's worth considering that kind of alignment versus that kind of alignment. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. You could even hear me kind of hitting some wrong notes because of the ridiculous stretch involved. But it's better to do that than to do this. Because all of this extraneous moving through the position rotations or deviations, I guess they're called, in the left hand is a little amateurish. If you want to develop proper professional technique, you want to maximize the stretch before it gets uncomfortable, truly uncomfortable and minimize extraneous motions. So, and we get into measure six. So a big jump here, I'll show it. You don't wanna hold onto that second finger. You really treat it as a staccato jump into a new position with that swing over of the right hand as soon as you hit the F. So a couple of specific motions to really teach yourself to do. So downbeat of measure six, that. Ooh, my thumb should be in the left hand here. So one more time, right? But before that in the in the right hand in the left hand, right? So right hand is sort of set, but then that's the jump. So this and that you have this and then that. So first this and then that as I play the, the right hand. So occasionally you'll have quick readjustments of positions in both hands and you really have to practice it. Backward practice is where it's at, right? Let's do this, just do that until it feels like this swing happens. And then from here, so first you hold the penultimate note of, or not penultimate, the last note of the previous measure right here, and jump. So, tricky but doable. All right, measure six. Ah, tricky. I'm really bending my thumb underneath, and a lot of people would not like it, but unless you reposition the thumb and take advantage of the pedal uh, to tie those two notes together, one, one, maybe two, three, five, um, you don't really have other choice. I mean, I guess you could do five, five, four, one, two, no, one, four, one, five. I mean, it just, it's an uncomfortable right hand passage. So I think one, two, one works, but you really have to work that bend in action in the thumb. As you can see me playing through these two measures, a lot of micro adjustments happening all the time. So the very end of this line I have this. And just to look to see where the left hand is going, there it is. 
it's basically in position only the thumb has to shift. So I like where I'm at, right? But I would remind myself, hey, you get to that F sharp, whoops, let's use the red there. Just reminding myself to reposition the thumb right away as soon as I clear the pedal right here, right? So that's the only real thing I need to do. Might even make a smaller box because that box looks like I have to reposition a lot of fingers. No, it's just that thumb. There it is. So the right hand is in position, all good there. Right. As long as I can do that, that the line is, uh, the end of the line is perfect. Now getting into it, I'm going to start from right here, that blue line. So the thumb has to move, right? It has to move to where? To G, because you'll see in a second, right there. Yeah, that G in measure eight, you can barely see it. That's played with one, so pull it in. So if I were to notate it again, I would pre put it right here. Whoops, kind of large, but you know what I'm trying to do. Right, so I'm just really forcing my motions uh, into the practice right away. Otherwise, it becomes a pain to, to get it right later on. Ah, what am I doing, right? Why am I moving again? So I need to remember these things. R right hand is set once I move the thumb. Left hand is set once I move this thumb. All right, and that's all I'm practicing. I'm forcing these two mo motions to happen at the exact right time. And notice I'm always stopping in the same spot. Very specific adjustment, didn't quite uh, change the pedal. That's better. Okay, then let's move the uh, blue line. Maybe starting from right here. All right. And I would say that the most important thing there is to practice the left hand jump. keep wanting to do this incorrect jump to a two because that's a much more common way to finger this shape but it should be three four because then I can do th two three one in measure eight which you cannot see in the left hand but let's let's practice this one more time um, I shouldn't be playing all three notes that's the position and so sorry holding the, the blue line Right, and then as soon as I get off of that blue line, all I'm working on is that shift. Now, I'm not even going all the way to where I used to stop. Let's color it with, I don't know, purple line. Right, I'm not even going as far as that. I'm stopping right here. Because once too many shifts have to be practiced, I find the brain just explodes. Right, so that's all I'm doing. Now, once you review these sorts of shifts and you sleep on it and the following day you come back to it, maybe now, okay, let's, um, kind of hard to re remove this uh, line, let's see. Uh, so, so let's say the, the, the next time you come to this, all right, you start here. Right, you're making sure that this happened. That, oops, it didn't happen. Let's do it again. My my right hand is in position, right five finger position there. My left hand is in this position with the thumb extended to D, as shown by that red rectangle. Okay, so let's say I've set that up. I'm gonna stop there. Actually, gonna put a line right here for, sorry, put a line right here to so, show my stopping point. Okay, now starting from right here. Alright, so I'm holding down all three notes in the left hand, these ones. Ok, 
okay holding it holding it the pedal is down and then I changed the pedal I repositioned the thumb and I stopped because I want to fix that moment in my brain right okay fine did it a couple of times maybe then you go to he put it down the top slide okay here we go holding that holding that pedal is down and then as soon as I change the pedal reposition the thumb I stop okay then maybe starting from here already in position on the left hand remember putting the thumb in now here actually I think I will change the pedal because the previous harmony is different and so that change will occur right so two pedal changes two position changes first in the right hand then the left hand okay and then uh, I'm gonna delete this redo the pedal and now starting from here so I'm holding this both hands are where they are and now pedal is down Ooh, hard so as soon as I get off I need to move the left hand and I'm not doing the right positioning right I'm going for the second finger I should be going for the third finger okay so the third the second day of going through this moment of many many position changes will feel a little easier but still a lot to uh, work on and then of course you know you keep advancing backwards until you feel you've got that whole measure under control okay the pedal is down all right so all these little micro adjustments need to happen at just the right time pedal is doing the thing let's see if i can play the whole thing starting in measure six know if I want to necessarily change the pedal too often definitely here definitely change it right there maybe here to clear it definitely here and then like that I think it's nice to give it a little that G flat F clash might be a little too much but even if you let the pedal go through those last two beats of measure six I think that's okay as long as you don't stop and linger on the dissonance it'll pass by just fine right as long as you change it on the downbeat of measure seven but up to you so what did I do wrong ah I kept finger three on C right and the idea is in measure seven to replace it with four I mean you could actually keep three on C and just play five three two three and then replace it with uh, replace three with four later I don't know Let, let's do what what the fingering says it, it it has logic behind it so let's try it right so four and that kind of means that if I'm practicing the end of measure six like that I want to remind myself to readjust my position right there some people like to adjust positions in the same time in both hands like that some people would prefer to do it right here that means you first do the left hand like this and then the right hand Whichever way you choose, you have to practice it that way.
what's nice is after having practiced the measure seven so thoroughly, I find, oh, my, my fingers know exactly where to go. Anyway, so a little bit of that backwards practice on that measure seven. Let's see what else is on this page. I think two on F sharp is better because that way I can hold the D in my fifth finger even if I need to let go of the pedal. Now I don't have to let go, but I can let go and really enjoy that F sharp moment. But I just think it, it has a more natural hand position than if I do it this way. And then a big stretch from 4 to this 4. In fact, I, I really like these sorts of slides. I'll show you. 2, 2, 2. <laughs> like this. So um, that just kind of keeps me in a better position. Right, so as I hit that F sharp, hold the pedal or don't hold the pedal doesn't matter, but thumb extends to D, that D right here, and then I just slide. Yeah, that's a nasty little thing right here. Again, make sure to readjust position as soon as you hit G right there. Yeah, I'm a big fan of these weird fingerings. Look. Right, so I'm angling the third so I can put five on A, and that gives me a much better control than to jump or whatever. Or you could even do that slide we did earlier, right? Two, two here. You could do three, three, two. Let's do that. That's a good compromise. Now, um, I would I would encourage actually a two five two one three and then stretch to a two four. Just keeps the same position in the left hand for negotiating all those transitions. So two here, and then a three there, and then a four right here. Slide and then. Or, yeah, I don't know. If you want a true legato as written on that measure 10, you really have to go to finger 2 and maybe like 4 on G in the right hand. But given that we can use the pedal, then I think 1-1 one, one is fine. 1-1. One, one. Maybe clear the pedal here. Where is the pedal? Right here. Sorry, let me try again. Something like that, right? And so on. And then here, I would go for three and four instead of two and three so I can use the long second finger on F sharp. And then yes, it keeps, uh, prepares five for the B flat it seems, but you can just pick up four and place it where three is, or, or three. Right, you've got the pedal to do that. I just don't enjoy having to use one on black keys unless I have to. But again, it's not a big deal if you stay with 2-3-1 like that. The advantage of 2-3-1 is of course that you stay with the second finger on G. So, yeah, I, let's, let's do that. You know what, it's... Again, a lot of choices have their own advantages, their own disadvantages. You just have to choose which one you go with. 
important part is this moment. Now I'm putting that position change there just in case you decide, hey, maybe that extra pedal clearing on the fourth beat is desired. So, right, and then you change both hands. So, something like that. Here you can either use you either use uh, one four or one five. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I like that five five thing. Four and there is that five, right? We talked about it earlier, where you can do three five, but there is that example of four five, and of course the writ is really important to lead us into the more developed bass. Hold on, I need to change my view. There it is. So. I would encourage this fingering there. Simply so that I can keep my thumb on G, right? Thumb, two, three, two, thumb. Right, just makes it a little easier. Meanwhile, we need to do something like that and that. Wherever you move, just do it there all the time. Right? So that motion of preparation is coordinated with whatever the left hand is doing. this melody is exactly the same as what we saw up an octave there. Of course my computer decided to get stuck again. Get unstuck, get unstuck, come on, come on. Uh, but yeah, the fingering there where you see with the brown highlight. Right? And we talked about sliding into the keys as you progress through this uh, D, G, D, G passage. D, G, D, G, E flat, D, B flat, D. Right, and so let's go back down. Here it is, the same melody. D, G, slide in, E flat, D, B flat, D. And then we get to the next page, but I'll talk about it at some other time. Just maybe discuss alternative fingerings here. Right, so we have... Usually we did 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah. Now here we have to reach further up. And yes, we could do 2 again. But because we have to go to E flat, right, this one right here, um, yeah, the thumb kind of forces us to go deep inside the key. So we have to kind of slide in like this. If we keep those black keys as the targets for our long fingers, maybe easier. And that way you can use the thumb on the D. Anyway, just something to consider as an alternative to what's written. Hello? Okay, I'm stuck again. It seems... there. So that, that would be my... And then 4 is already on the B flat. Right, and that basically reduces this passage to just two positions, which are not that hard to get into. All right. Enjoy. Uh, it's a good arrangement, good piece. Uh, that's it. Ask questions in the comments.